you know, I'm not hearing anything, Mike, and I believe it said it started the broadcast. So I'm having some technical difficulties here, some issues. So I want to apologize to everyone. I'm going to share my screen here and see if you can hear me. Um, please, someone just type in and let me know that you can hear me and that this is being, uh, that it's actually coming through okay. Uh, if you'll type in your questions bar there that you can hear me, I would definitely appreciate that. Sounds like, uh, oh, I'm getting texts in. Looks like, uh, let's see, Mike says he can hear me. John says he can hear me and it's painful. Oh, John, brutal. Okay, well, it sounds like everybody can hear me. I think there are some issues with my speakers, unfortunately. Um, Mike, why don't you talk and let me know if you can hear Mike, everybody. Maybe it is only on my end. Hello, can anyone can hear me hear now? Mike, or is it just me? Hello, hello. Oh, my goodness. Wonder if they can hear. We hear both. Uh oh. Well, I can't hear Mike at all, so that's a problem. It's that is going to be problematic, Mike, when you're talking and knowing, and I can't, uh, I can't hear you, and but you can hear me. That's going to be very, very interesting. This webinar here. So, um, I'm going to try one thing here. Let's see here. I'm going to, uh, you know what, we're going to try this again. So everybody, I apologize. I'm going to shut this down and then turn it back on and, and please re-log back on. I'm going to close it down for now and then we're going to try this again because this is going to be problematic if I have questions for Mike and I can't hear him and and uh, there's issues with my audio. So give me, give me 30 seconds to work this out. I'm going to close it down. Please log back on. I apologize in advance, but we'll start this over here in about two minutes. Thanks. actually oh if i end it that's going to be a problem if i end it hang on okay all right mike i'm gonna have you try to talk again i think i can hear now i apologize for the technical difficulties i'm actually hearing sound out of my speakers now but mike has to can come hear back me, on and type in his audio pin so we'll get started here in just a minute i apologize me, everyone for these technical difficulties first time this has happened can you hear me? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Well, I'm gonna hello, share hello. my screen while, while Mike's getting back on here. Looks like uh, interesting. Hello, hello. Oh, cute. I'm getting some real fun comments on this, and this is actually a lot of fun. Um, but it sounds like I can't, I still can't hear Mike, but others can. So that's interesting. Well, hello, hello. I'm going to just go ahead and get started here. Um, and I, uh, Mike, if you have something you want to say, I guess you're just going to have to text me. I, my speakers seem to be working fine, and for whatever reason, I can't get you through. But um, we're going to go ahead and get started because I don't want to, I don't want to, if I close out the, the presentation, then it will, uh, I have to restart and resubmit the or resend the uh, the invites, and so that's not going to work out at all. I don't know what's going on on my end, and I apologize in advance. But uh, feel free to type in your questions. This this presentation is called "Frequently Asked Questions About uh, Reinforced Concrete Pipe and Precast." We're going to go through a lot of the questions that I get asked. Uh, for my my day to day job. So uh, my name is Jason Allen. I am with Old Castle Infrastructure. Uh, the Mountain States Concrete Pipe Association is putting on these academy webinars and a lot of people ask what is the Mountain States Concrete Pipe Association? Well, we are made up of two main member companies, manufacturing companies, Geneva Pipe and Precast. 
and Old Castle infrastructure in addition to Ashgrove and Wholesome. And what we do is we provide technical assistance for the RCP and precast concrete industry by working closely with engineers, specifiers, inspectors, installers, and uh, we, we give a lot of presentations. We go to conferences, webinars, we do lunch and learns. We also review and write specifications, help uh, cities and consultants with that. We answer constructability and design questions. Um, and some of the things that we're doing this year, obviously, you're part of this, uh, you're here part of this uh, Mountain States Concrete Pipe Academy. We're doing all of those. So um, we've, we've had a lot, we, this is our 10th presentation actually. Um, so uh, this is, we've done one each month and we're going through here uh, as we as we go through here's a, a view of if you go to our website at mountainstates.concretepipe.org academy uh, we have this shows you all the upcoming webinars that you can register for and in addition you can go back and watch on demand any previous webinars uh, we also have our pipe it program where if you attend 10 so if you've watched all of them now you are eligible to uh, to put the stickers on your button just send me a picture wearing it and you'll win a prize uh, these are these are the shirts we're giving away. We also have project monthly project profiles. You can see those at mountainstates.concretepipe.org slash project profiles. And these are highlighting any projects that use RCP, box culvert, precast. They're, um, and then at the end of the year, we're going to allow folks to vote and we'll have a project achievement award that we will give out. If you have a project you want highlighted, feel free to suggest it. We would love to uh, we would love to have that uh, on our on our arsenal of projects that we want to highlight on our website. Um, Another thing that we have going is, uh, as you, as I mentioned, I now work for Old Castle Infrastructure, and uh, as such, we are looking to hire a new Mountain States Concrete Pipe Association director. So, if you want to add your name to the list of of uh, previous directors in the Hall of Fame, like Randy and myself, um, feel free to apply and do that. So, uh, you can get more information at notyourtypicalengineer.com, or you could just uh, reach out to me. Uh, this is my contact information. You can email me at jason.allen at oldcastle.com. That's my phone number uh, up there, 801-540-0334. Or uh, I still have the msconcretepipe at gmail.com address active as well. So you can reach out to me there. Well, we're, we're going to jump right in to our, uh, our questions here, our frequently asked questions. And the first one that I usually get asked is, are you really a professional engineer? And uh, I checked this morning, and yes, I am still active and in good standing, according to the uh, Utah State uh, State Licensing Board. So uh, yes, that is that is true. My son one time broke his his uh, zip up zip up tie. He ripped it off. He pulled it off his neck, just pulled it down, and it, it fell to pieces. And he, he said, well, Dad, you could fix it. Didn't you used to be an engineer? So even my son isn't convinced that I'm actually a, a PE. So um, the biggest question right now that we get are why are lead times so long right now? Uh, this is a, this is a really big question. I wanted to get it out of the way earlier, or early in this presentation, and and talk about it. So uh, why are lead times so long right now? Well, uh, RCP and precast lead times depend on a lot of different things. So right now we've had three interesting things happen over the last year: uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, obviously. Uh, we've had some there have been some supply chain issues with um rationing on on our cement on steel um on you know steel shortages on other different things so there have been a few supply chain issues but the the real the real reality of this whole thing is that it's it's market conditions uh i know i could speak for our plant and i'm pretty sure uh geneva will agree to this we have had uh our biggest year at old castle uh that we've ever had this year because there is just so much demand for pipe, box culvert, manhole, catch basins. The demand is is insanely high and it continues to be so, so that we are selling more than we've ever sold. So it's not like we're sitting around waiting to get our steel or our cement or our aggregate. We have it. It's just that the market demand is so high right now that it's hard to keep up. And because of all those three things coming together, it's created uh, the perfect storm here so uh, we're going to try a poll real fast before we move on to our next question so i'm going to try a poll just to make sure this is working here and we're going to see it um i'm going to see here let's launch this one and we're going to see how many people know how many classes of circular rcp are there so you've got three classes four classes five or six how many classes of circular rcp this is kind of a review question from one of our uh, previous uh, previous webinars. Our very first one in January actually covered this. 
So I'll let you, uh, as we're collecting responses here, I'm gonna let you continue to vote. Looks like most of you have voted. So I'm gonna give you five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. All right, I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna share it with you. And it looks like a majority of you, two thirds said five classes of pipe. That is correct. Now, if you said six classes, um, one could make the argument that there are five classes of pipe and then you can do a special design and that would count as a sixth class. But the standard classes of pipe are classes one, two, three, four, and five. Well done. So let's move on here to our to our next slide. And that question is, what classes of RCP are available locally? For instance, if I want to spec um, a class five, do you manufacture class five? If I want to specify a class one, do you spec do you carry class one? And so what we what we have locally are class three, class four, and class five pipe. Now, if we want to get a larger uh, if we have larger pipes, sometimes we will we will manufacture a class two um, on larger diameter pipes. But in general, it's class three, four, and five, and and then we have some direct design classes as well. As I mentioned before, um, if if a class five, if we need something different from a class five, something bigger than class five because of construction loads or or heavy loads or moments because a retaining wall or something is near it, uh, we can do a direct design and create a custom pipe for that project. So. Uh, these are the, the the classes that we carry locally. All right, um, this is a big one, a big question we get. What is the minimum cover requirement for reinforced concrete pipe? Uh, it's so it depends on on what project you're working on, but there are some specifications that cover this. Now, uh, for UDOT projects, they want no less than 18 inches. So 18 inches is the minimum cover for there. Typical for for municipal projects. Um, that would be 12 inches. APWA um, specs call out 12 inches minimum. Now, if necessary, you can go less, but we don't recommend it. it, it it's possible that we can go less. Um, but a couple of things that you need to remember when you're going less and when you're going even 12 inches of cover uh, or less, you've got bells that tend to stick up a few inches above where where you say, oh, we've got we've got 12 inches of cover here, but oh, we didn't take into account the bell. And if that bell sticks up three inches and now it's into your asphalt or pavement section, we wanna make sure that we're taking that into account, okay? The other thing is if you only have 12 inches of cover on a pipe, what are your construction loading? What are your covers uh, during construction? And so we recommend that you have anywhere from two to three feet covering the pipe during construction at all times. So sometimes you have to, if it's shallow cover, you would have to bring in dirt and fill it up over it. So as you drive over this pipe, with the construction loads, it's going to it's going to meet those. A lot of times we'll say, well, I only need a class three pipe based on this fill, but if it only has six inches of cover during construction and you're driving these huge loads over it, we could have issues with the pipe later on. All right, uh, what is the maximum cover for reinforced concrete pipe? Great question. Uh, I get this quite a bit. And realistically, the, the cover always depends on the bedding. There's four different types of bedding. Again, if you watched our, our webinar from January, uh, we covered this. If you didn't, feel free to go back and watch it on demand at any time. But we talk about the four different types of bedding. All right. And and we also talked about fill height charts. OK, so uh, this is this is a, an example from a fill height chart. If you notice, based on the color codes, this is for a type one bedding, which is like your premier primo bedding. And if you look at, let's say we have a, a 36 inch pipe. This one says you can go all the way up with a type one bedding all the way up to 52 feet of fill. Right, the purple is special design. So if we needed 60 feet of fill, we could design that. So depending on your bedding, you could you could definitely go very very deep on on these pipes. All right, um, but a special design we we would customize to your needs, whatever that is. So that is that is possible to do that there. Um, what class of pipe should I specify on my project? I talked to to one group of engineers one time that said, well, we just always specify class three. Well, most of what they were doing were were residential uh, developments and with about three to four in, uh, feet of cover, and that's that's going to be fine uh, for typically for a class three. But we should always verify and double check. Now, uh, if you would like, there is a handout tab on this webinar that you can click. I have included PDFs of the American Concrete Pipe Association fill height charts, one for circular pipe and one for elliptical and arch pipe. So if you want to download those, 
uh, you can, and then you would have copies of these field height charts. If you if you don't or you ever forget or you don't know what you what you did with it and you want to get a copy of that, you can get those on our website. If you just scroll down to the very bottom of the home screen, you can see uh, here's here's a view of it on my screen. You could see the circular and the elliptical uh, PDFs that you can download there. So as we look in there, they've got standard trench installation. Um, a picture there. It talks about the different types of installation here, and and then these are uh, these are what the fill height charts look like, color coded to make it easy for you. Um, class class one is pink, class two would be orange, class three is yellow, class four is green, class five is blue, and then special design is purple. Now you can always go up in class. So if it says that all you need is a class one, it's not going to hurt you to do a class three. The problem is when we say it tells us we need a class five and we still specify a class three. So you can always go more and, and higher because we're putting in more steel and it, it's going to be able to absorb higher loads. So keep that in mind. So we'll just do a quick example here um, to, to walk you through this. Uh, this is, again, in our previous webinar, but feel free to, to look at this and, and do this. Um, this is an example with a 36-inch RCP. Okay, We're going to look at a type 2 bedding. And uh, our flow line is 16 feet below the roadway surface, right? We as engineers, a lot of times we'll say, okay, we know our flow line as it comes into the box. So when we say 16 feet below the roadway surface, we have to determine what the cover is going to be, all right? So our cover we're going to look at is going to be 12.67 feet because we know a 36-inch pipe, we subtract the three feet, right? So that takes us up to 15 feet. Um, or excuse me, down to 13 feet, and then we know that the 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 width of the pipe, excuse me, the 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 thickness of the pipe is going to be three inches. So that's that's where our 0.33 is. We take that out. So our cover on top of our pipe is going to be 12.67 feet. So we're going to round up to use 13 feet of cover for this example. Okay. So we go to our fill height charts. We look over over uh, here for a type two bedding. We make sure we're using the correct bedding, which we are. We look over on the left-hand side at the 36 inches, okay? And then we go down to 13 feet. We go all the way over and we find that we need a class three pipe for that. So not too bad, not too bad. Um, so Mike, Mike mentioned something, and I again, I apologize, Mike, that I can't hear you, so I don't know when you're talking, but Mike did make a note um, that he's done a, a pipe buried 100 feet before. So that's one where we had to have a thicker wall, more steel, and, and, and do a big design for that. So that's, that's wild, 100 feet. I can't, even, I can't even imagine. So thanks for sharing that, Mike. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think I've got another example here. Let's look and see. Yes. Let's look at an 18 inch pipe with one foot of cover with a type three bedding. So let's go into here. We've got our type three bedding, got our 18 inch pipe and our one foot of one foot of fill. So we go over here and we notice the loading is 1384 pounds per, per foot per foot. That means we need a class four pipe. So an 18 inch pipe, one foot of cover, we would need class four. So um, that's how we use these fill height charts. Again, if you want a little bit more detail on how to use those, we uh, we have a webinar that we did in January that you're more than welcome to, to view and, and watch that. So um, I don't have much cover. What are my options? Great question. We get this a lot. Low cover options would include uh, increasing the class of pipe as we've talked. If you if you want to if you have to go less and we have to use a circular pipe, we can increase the class or do a direct design for that and make that work. Uh, I've seen where we use multiple pipes where instead of you know, one 48 inch pipe, you use a couple of 36s. That's always an option to use multiple pipes in, in a series there and, and use that. Um, another option would be elliptical pipe. We have elliptical or arch pipes that are, um, some people call them older older school folks call them squash pipe. But basically it's a it's a form that we use to make them uh, they they are they are flatter so that we can we can do a, a horizontally elliptical pipe so that you can have uh, more cover on top of there. So uh, that's an option. I've also talked to folks about using box culvert. Um, that becomes a little bit difficult sometimes, especially in small diameter pipe, because uh, you know you've got your your walls of your of your smaller box culverts are eight inches anyway. So you know if you go wider and narrow, it depends on what size of pipe you have, but that's always an option as well. So um, so th those are our low cover options and things that that's a question we get asked quite often there. All right. Um, here's one. Because you love baseball so much, Jason, what do you think about this year's playoffs? I mean, it's playoff time. Um, I 
I am a big uh, Cleveland Guardians fan. Uh, now that the season's over, I guess I can retire the old Indians name and we can talk about the Cleveland Guardians. So as a Cleveland Guardians fan, um, I don't really have a dog in this fight, but I did see this summed up perfectly um, the other day on on uh, this Facebook meme that someone posted. Um, it says logos of the remaining four teams, and it basically spells out the way I feel about these playoffs. So hopefully you uh, are able to enjoy that as much as I am there. So um, Mike mentions also other options for minimum fill could be to design a concrete distribution slab. Um, like when you have like airport loading, uh, they'll they'll have a slab on top of it that distributes the load so it's not a point load on top of the pipe. Great suggestion, Mike. Uh, that's a, a very good suggestion. I'll have to add that into here for future for future presentations as well. Uh, but thank you for that. Um, with that, let's do another poll because I want to see what everybody else thinks. Um, I'm gonna make you choose one here, okay? Who do you want to win the World Series? So feel free, choose one. I didn't give a uh, I didn't give a, a choice to not care, but just choose one who you think. I want to I want to see who people are polling for this year, who they want to win. Half of you voted, two thirds now. I'll give you about 10 more seconds to vote. And then we'll share the, the results here. Oh, pretty balanced there. All right. Um, I'm going to share the results here. Looks like a majority are saying Boston Red Sox, a third say Boston Red Sox, uh, about a quarter of you say Houston or Atlanta, and then very few at the LA Dodgers. Boy, I'll tell you, um, I am I'm kind of right in line with that. I'm, I'm hoping for the Red Sox. Not a big Houston Astros fan because of uh, things that have happened with that organization recently. Uh, don't love that. Uh, never liked the Dodgers, and uh, I, I I tolerate the Braves, so I guess that'll work. But anyways, um, thank you so much for for sharing your uh, opinions and feelings there. Uh, let's move on to the next question here. All right, what is the minimum cover on for a box culvert? All right, so if we're looking at box culverts, um, you know, these are our three-sided or our, our four-sided box culverts. Our minimum cover, th this is based on a specification called ASTM C1577. ASTM C1577, the specification is called Standard Spec for Precast Reinforced Concrete Monolithic Box Sections for Culverts, Storm Drains, and Sewers Designed According to AASHTO LRFD. In other words, this is our box culvert spec, all right? I know that's a lot of words to just say box cover spec, but it gives you uh, recommendations on where the steel should be placed and how we should do that. I know this is kind of, uh, you know, this is a high level view of it, but um, what it is, is it's a table spec that tells you for custom size, or excuse me, for standard sizes, what the cover should be. Now, if you notice on this table here, on the very top line there, it says design earth covers zero to less than two feet. Then we've got one where you have steel, all these steel areas that you put in. You've got uh, two to three, up to up to 30 feet of fill for these standard size box culverts. So uh, for this specification, it allows you, it gives you what the what the thickness is, which would be for this box six inches uh, thick for a five by four. Um, you know, you and then and then you've got you can go right up to zero foot of cover, which means you could drive right on top of this. So you could put your traffic right on top of these box culverts if you have the correct steel. So the the uh, the minimum cover for a box culvert would be zero. So you could put you could put uh, put no no cover on top of these and, and be fine. Now this is a these are for uh, standard sizes. You can also you can also do uh, custom. So if we if we have a custom size that isn't fit in this spec or if we want to change the steel areas based on our calculations, uh, we have structural engineers. Mike is one for Geneva. And then we have Troy Banks with Old Castle that we can do uh, custom sizes and change the steel areas in that. So um, we did have a uh, we did have a, uh, a, a question here um, that I'll, I'll jump right into. It says, uh, what is the equivalent diameter? Um, at what equivalent diameter does a box become more cost effective than an elliptical pipe? And um, I think that that Mike answered that one. Um, generically speaking, a box culvert will almost always be more expensive than an elliptical pipe for the same flow capacity. Elliptical pipe only comes in certain sizes and a little harder to get them uh, get than box culverts. So box culvert is a little bit more readily available. Uh, best thing to do would be to reach out to either of us, either Geneva or Old Castle, and and get some engineer's estimates for you. So we'd be happy to help you out with that. Great question, Chuck. Um, Jason Watson, I think you understand. I think you know why there was a, a quote, Bush League icon next to the Astros. Um, you know. 
you know. Okay. Um, next, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, what is the biggest box culvert that you can manufacture? And Mike, I'm going to ask you to type yours in as well if it's different from what I'm talking here. But um, for Old Castle, our maximum box culvert size is we can do a combined width and rise of 30 feet. So for example, we can do uh, 20 by 10, 22 by 8, 15 by 15, but that's what, what we've got. Our width and rise, you know, our, our span and rise need to be a combined of 30 feet. So um, that's what the maximum size that we can do in a four-sided box culvert. Now, um, if we want like a three-sided, like we see in this picture here, a three-sided box, we can do 30 by 10. And uh, so that would make mean if you want to do a clamshell where these boxes sit right on top of each other. So you have a, a 10 foot, 30 by 10 on top of a 30 by 10, we could essentially go 30 by 20 in that four-sided. So uh, we could do that. And, and Mike, I'll let you type in and let me know if that's uh, if that's what y'all can do as well. So I'll wait to see if you if you post that while I move on to my next question. All right, the next question is, are you really a registered Democrat? A lot of people uh, are, are confused by this. They think, wow, Democrats are evil and, and terrible people, which we 100% are. Um, but they always ask, are you really a registered Democrat? And, and uh, yes, I am. Um, I, I'll let this, this uh, picture speak for itself. This is uh, the, this is actually the the chairman of the of the uh, board of directors for the American Concrete Pipe Association, where we were testing out the uh, the photos up in South Dakota at the Washto event. So this is um, yeah. So that's that's fun. If that doesn't get you to uh, believe in me being a Democrat, I don't know what will. Okay. Um, Mike says Geneva is very similar to what what I said. Uh, there are options for there are options for split for culverts though. So if you're close to the 30 foot span and rise and you want to know if we can do it just reach out to both plants yeah that's a great point mike if there's uh if if we have if we're not able to do you know or if we're over that 30 foot let, let's talk and we'll kind of figure out what we can do and we'll we'll see how we can how we can do that all right uh is gravel okay for bedding or backfill i get this question a lot um a lot of contractors have pea gravel laying around and they think oh you know can we use this now um, we talked a little bit earlier about bedding, right? Some of the things that we want to be, we want to watch for when we're looking at at backfill for our for our uh, our RCP is a couple of things. Number one, we want to make sure we're we're meeting the structural needs based on the bedding of our pipe, and number two, we want to make sure that we're not going to undermine the structure above the pipe. We're not going to undermine our trench or our asphalt above the pipe. So, um, as we look into there. You know, some things we need to consider is, you know, if we're using pea gravel, there's a very high possibility of migration of fines. So if we have a roadway surface above, we want to make sure we address that. Some of the things that we've that I've seen happen with with pea gravel and, and some of the solutions, if there's a lot of pea gravel and we 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 have the structural capacity to do that with the pipe. One thing I've seen is burrito wrapping with the filter fabric to make sure that water can pass through, but the fines won't be won't pass through and undermine our structure. So that is an option if we want to use the pea gravel. Another issue with with pea gravel is just there's a general lack of compaction. You know, if you if you've got if you're putting marbles on top of each other, round marbles, you're not going to be able to compact those. And are they going to be able to grip one another? Not really. So that makes it very flowable. That's one of the big issues with pea gravel. Now, the next question would be, what about crushed gravel? Can we use that? Now, one thing you're going to have with crushed gravel is you're still going to have the issue with the migration of fines. However, because it's crushed and it's angular, you do get a little bit of interlocking. Uh, still can't really get good compaction out of it, but at least it's interlocking so that it doesn't flow as well. So if you, um, some of the people that I've talked to say, well, we don't like pea gravel because when you backfill it into a into a trench and you dig to to work on that pipe, it just flows and runs on you the entire trench runs out on you which we don't want to have that it makes it very difficult for maintenance crews so there are some issues but the answer is the 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 short answer is yes but there's a little bit more of a long answer where there may be some things that you need to do to ensure that that you're not undermining the structure and that we're not you know making making bigger issues in the future with that okay so uh the next question should i require any inspection after installation um, I cannot I cannot stress this enough. The answer to this is 100% yes. You should require inspection after installation. Look, when we're when when we're whether we're with the the cities, the the counties, uh, the state, uh, whether we're a consulting engineer, we as engineers have a responsibility to design these projects and make sure that they're going to last. Right? It's the responsibility of the contractor 
to install those in a way that we tell them to make sure that they're going to last. Now, most cities that I know, the that's kind of an issue right now that we're seeing as well is is with all of the with all the projects going on. I talked earlier about market conditions and how much is going on right now, how much construction is happening right now. I you know, as I talked about that one of the issues and one of the big concerns is do we have enough inspectors to watch all of these pipes being installed to watch all these roads being built to watch all of these this infrastructure going in that is a big big concern right and and where we don't have someone all the time um most of us at least most cities most counties most most uh projects do not have an inspector on the job every single second of the day when when pipes being installed or when the roads being built so um, one way that we can check and make sure that it is being built correctly is through post-installation inspection. Now, um, I, I am a big believer in post-installation inspection. I believe it's very important. I'll talk to you a little bit on, on I really love the APWA spec. This is um, what the APWA spec is for. Uh, this is 330800. Okay, this is called commissioning water lines. This is a whole spec in the APWA spec book that's all about the inspecting of the pipe after it's been installed and what you need to do to pass these inspections and these tests to ensure that you're getting what you what you paid for all right so um one of those is uh the test that they have there's four different tests that they have for storm drain pipes okay uh first is alignment and grade so they want to make sure that it is on alignment it's not skewed it doesn't kind of move and go up and down and up and down. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure some of you have seen some some videos. I have a presentation that I show. Um, Randy has one that he used to give where he he inter, or he overlaid the Jaws music on it where the, the camera would go and there was a little bit of water in the pipe and as the camera would go, the water would get deeper and deeper and then it would get shallower and shallower and he had the Jaws theme playing as this, as this camera would go through this pipe, it would just, the water would get deeper and deeper, which shows that there were a lot of sags in the line which can be problematic, right? I mean, when you have sags, it it you you drop sediment in that area, so it, it it can clog up and back up and have more obstructions. So that's a problem. So we're we're wanting to check alignment and grade, right? It talks about video inspection, having having a video inspection go through through the lines and how frequently you should do that. Now every every city, every state's different. I know um, you know John from ITD texted me that he's listening. So ITD has has requirements and and recommendations on how much they should do. UDOT has recommendations and requirements on depending on the, the type of road and, and how many pipes you should check and test and ABWA and cities can set that as well, whether they want 100% of their pipes checked, whether they want 50%, whether they want a random selection or just a certain area. So you can determine how many of those, but but this this one recommends that we do all, all the pipes should be video inspected. Okay, for for um, there's also a deflection test. Now, keep in mind that deflection testing does not apply to concrete pipe. You're not going to go pull a mandrel through a concrete pipe. And the reason is, is that concrete pipe doesn't deflect. Okay, concrete pipe cracks, flexible pipe like metal um, or plastic pipe, they will deflect if they're loaded too much. So so there's you know, we're checking for cracks on concrete and we're checking for deflection on flexible pipes. So the deflection test does not apply to the concrete. You're, you're not gonna wanna, it's a waste of time to go pull a mandrel, to, mandrel through a concrete pipe because if it's deflected, then it's it's hit ultimate and it needs to be removed and replaced, right? If it's if your concrete pipe is deflected, that means you crushed it and it, it's no longer uh, structurally sound. So, um, you and you'll be able to tell that in a video inspection the other thing is an obstruction test they want to make sure that um you know nothing's obstructing the flow now this could be from uh you know something getting pounded into the pipe now we've even seen like um where in a shallow berry situation and then a contractor came in and put a concrete barrier up above where the pipe is and they drove these these stakes these steel stakes down into the ground to hold the concrete barrier and it goes right into the pipe we're looking for that is it being obstructed? Is it is it uh, going to obstruct the flow or cause any problems? Um, you know, in older pipes, you tend to see uh, like tree roots coming through, especially in like metal or plastic pipes. Uh, you'll see you'll see things obstructing through tree roots growing in. Um, we will see it sometimes in concrete coming through the joints, but not as not as frequently. But there are different obstructions and things that could happen that you need to test for. So APWA has a great specification. Uh, on this and what to what to look for. So yes, I 100% recommend that you should you should do post installation inspection for concrete pipe. You should be videoing them because we want to make sure that our products are being installed correctly. 
All right, that's a big deal for us in our in our in our industry. Um, additionally, we want to make sure that any pipe that goes in, as residents of this state and taxpayers of this of, of our communities, we want to make sure that whatever pipe goes in, it goes in correctly, and that we're not going to have to go back afterwards and pay to to fix it. And I'm sure uh, most of you on this call can relate to that as well. All right, on um, the next question. Whoops, here we go. Next question, Jason. I heard you ran for the state legislature. Uh, how did that go? Uh, well, uh, I lost. And so thanks for bringing it up and uh, bringing up old wounds. My wife just mentioned to me, so it was the last year and then three years ago I ran. So I lost not only once, but twice because I'm apparently a glutton for punishment. So um, my wife brought it up. She goes, do you remember last year at this time? We were like super stressed over the election and it was like crazy and we were working so hard. And I was like, yeah, she goes, she goes, I feel like we're even busier this year without that election. I was like, yeah, I don't know how that's possible, but boy, I'll tell you what, it is a relief not having to run for office this year. Um, people ask me a lot. They say, are you going to run for the state legislature again? Would you, would you ever consider running for, for political office again? And I think that my, my favorite character from the office, or at least one of my favorite characters from the office sums it up best uh, in this, in this animated gif. Um, when he's yelling, no, this, um, that is how I feel all the time. Just whenever anybody asks me, I just want to scream, no, absolutely not. I have no desire to uh, run for the state house again. So please don't, uh, please don't ask me to. All right. Um, oh, this is a big one. This is a great one. Is cracking acceptable? Is cracking in concrete pipe acceptable? Now, remember, we talked about in, in that APWA spec, it talked about, you know, different tests. And we, we mentioned the concrete is going to crack and, and uh, flexible pipe is going to deflect. Now, there is a certain level of acceptability within cracking, and there's also a level of acceptability within deflection. So, like for instance, in in deflection and flexible pipe, um, in like high, uh, thermoplastic pipes, HDPE, five up to five percent deflection is normal. It's fine. It's acceptable, right? Anything beyond that, you start getting out of ring compression, and we could have problems. So, uh, we want to make sure that it's anything within that is acceptable. Similarly, with RCP, um, a little bit of cracking is acceptable. All right, now um, let's let's go back to this spec and look at it. Okay, let's talk about what is acceptable. According to this spec, and this is based on our ASTM spec as well. This is our ASTM C76, which is our manufacturing spec. A hundredth of an inch is an acceptable crack width. Okay, that is acceptable. All right, maximum crack width that this spec allows is 0.1 inch. So, so one tenth of an inch, right? Um, anything above that would be remove and replace or some type of structural uh, fix on that, some type of remediation or repair structurally for anything over a tenth of an inch. So hundredth of an inch to a tenth of an inch is one that needs to be monitored and evaluated by a licensed engineer. Okay. Um, and that's one thing that I have been doing with Old Castle that I've been meeting with contractors. And, and I bring this up because I have been in meetings the last couple of weeks with contractors where um, and and with our our sales team and and the the cities and counties and people where we're talking about cracks like okay the, this pipe is cracked is this problematic is this not and so we talk a little bit about that and what that means so for a hundredth inch crack this is based on our our national ASTM C76 spec for it to qualify for a hundredth inch crack okay which is still considered a hairline crack mind you it has to be at least 12 inches long and it has to be at least a quarter of an inch deep. So if you take your leaf gauge, your hundredth inch leaf gauge, and you can't stick it in a, four, a quarter of an inch, then that does not qualify as a hundredth inch crack. It is less than a hundredth inch. So it's it's not even it's not even a, a crack that should register as as being an issue. Now, one thing that I have noticed is I talked to a city recently out of state. It is it wasn't in Utah, and they said, well, we noticed that the cracks are getting worse. And they showed me the two videos side by side. And and unfortunately, the first video was and I, I didn't have I, I asked them for pictures of these and you know they just sat down and showed it to me and I didn't have the picture so I wanted to I should have screen grabbed them in our in our zoom call but um I, I wanted to show the difference between the two and one of them it's bone dry the pipes are absolutely dry they haven't even been in use yet it was it was when they were first trying to commission it and, and they hadn't hadn't connected the storm drain haven't pulled the 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 fabric out of it and I mean this is brand new pipe no water has run through it the next pipe was uh filmed after they had flushed it and washed it. So it was all wet and it was already done. So uh, what happened is the, the first video, it's dry and you can see the cracks very clearly. And in the second video, it's wet. Now the cracks to me, uh, based on all the videos I've watched, they look the exact same. They didn't look different at all. 
the problem was when they're when the cracks are wet it tends to it, the water tends to exaggerate the cracks and makes it look worse so they're saying look these cracks are getting worse over time and i'm like well that's that's pretty rare because most times your your biggest loading comes during construction which was very clear was what happened here and then over time it just you know they'll heal their cell themselves or they'll they'll uh they'll they'll clear it up and so i i was like well i'm a little unsure let's let's keep monitoring them and seeing them and, and maybe next time we can get a video when it's dry because to me it looked like the cracks had not gotten worse it looked like they had actually gotten better it was just the 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 water around the crack made it look made it look bigger so um here's here's an example of a uh, of a crack here um this one's interesting i i like this one because you know this is a crack that was flagged but if you notice off to the right hand side um just to get an idea of how big that crack is that old castle logo there is one inch actually the whole thing is one inch because it's an 18 inch there so that whole thing is one inch so when you look at at how minimal that crack is it's very clear that that old castle 18 inch if, if that's if that stencil is one inch then those that crack is very small you know that's a, that's definitely a hairline so that wouldn't be an issue there um this is a video i'm not sure how well you can see this coming through it's it's going to be a little choppy but if you notice here i'm going to stop it right there so that you can see um this is a crack but if you notice the white stuff in that in that there on my screen okay that is that that white effervescent thing coming through there that is autogenous healing that is uh that is something that happens naturally in pipe where uh, in the concrete pipe i should say it happens naturally where the the oxygen in the air and the the uh the calcium carbonate or excuse me the, the calcium in and the uh and the carbon dioxide in the in the um sorry I'm, I'm getting all mixed up i apologize uh I'm, my my mouth's moving faster than my brain right now so basically you've got you've got water and the oxygen in the air and the carbon in the um the activated carbon in the in the in the in the concrete mixture right it all mixes together to create this carbon dioxide which then mixes with the calcium silicate and creates this calcium carbonate or limestone inside this crack and it'll seal itself in that crack and it'll automatically uh stop leaking so in smaller cracks anything under five hundredths of an inch or so this will will happen uh when it when it gets wet so if it has water coming in this is very natural and it happens happens all the time we've done tests on determining um how big of a crack you can do and it'll still heal we healed one that was five hundredths of an inch um it still healed it took a couple of months um for some of the smaller ones to heal the 500s it took about six months for that to heal before it stopped leaking um what we also did is we went back and tested these pipes after we cracked them and then healed them and the pipe was actually stronger so some people say well a crack's gonna make your pipe weaker well once it once it heals autogenously under the under the uh, uh the presence of water uh it actually makes your pipe your pipe is is stronger it deload tested higher than that so that's kind of interesting okay uh, next question is there a national specification for evaluating cracks in pipe oh that's a great question that is a great question um there are actually two uh mike mentioned one here and i'm gonna i i'm not gonna reference that one in this one so i'm glad he brought it up ashto spec r73 gives exact specific details on allowable cracks repairable cracks and rejectable crack cracks a great spec to have in reference if you deal with concrete pipe now Ashto R73 is mainly for us as manufacturers um, and, and when the pipe is delivered to the job, right? So um, so when, you, when you're when you watching it and reviewing it and we're saying, okay, we can repair these ones, we can't. So that's before it goes into the ground. Now, the big question is, what about pipe that, that has already been installed? Is there a national spec for evaluating cracks in pipe? Now, five years ago, the answer would have been no. So this is a relatively new specification that came out and I wanna share it with you. And we're not gonna go into too much detail on it because I have I have an idea on what I wanna do with this with this specification. But um, so so Mike talked about Ashto R73, great reference spec, good, uh, a good thing that, that we should have when we're dealing with pipe. But this is one that is relatively new. I mean, this is less than four years old. Um, I actually sit on the ASTM C13 committee and i was involved in reviewing this specification and and providing feedback on it helping to write certain portions it's a it's a very very good spec uh, i went through this with some engineers and contractors recently to talk a little bit about 
you know, what is acceptable and, and what this specification calls for. I would recommend that most that, that cities, if you get a chance, you should try to read this and familiarize yourself with what our national recommendations are and what this national spec says as far as pipe being acceptable or not. This is ASTM C1840. As I mentioned, it was adopted in 2017, so it is relatively new. This is called the Standard Practice for Inspection and Acceptance of Installed Reinforced Concrete Culvert Storm Drain and Sewer Pipe. So this is this is what it looks like. Now, Section 8 of this spec is uh, goes into the Installed Pipeline Evaluation and Acceptance Criteria. So uh, this is a great section, Section 8. It goes in through there. 8.2 is all about cracks. You can see their crack evaluation and it talks about how to evaluate them. 8.3 talks about joints. So it even goes into what, what is acceptable with joints and, and different things. So uh, great specification. Okay, this is one that I, you know, I don't want to I don't want to do it any disservice, so I'm just going to mention that this spec is available, ASTM C1840. However, I think this would be a great topic for a future webinar. So um, my last poll question, I'm going to launch it. Would you be interested in a future webinar all about ASTM C1840, where we really dig into it and go into the, into the uh, meat and potatoes of this specification? Let me know if this is something you would be interested in if this is something that you think would help you in your day to day and if we if if so then you know we will probably uh look at doing something like that okay it's like a little over half of you voted we'll give you a little bit more okay we'll give you about 10 more seconds to get all the rest of the votes in here all right we'll go Five more seconds. Looks like we've got about everybody that we're going to get. Okay. All righty. Um, I'll share that. It looks like uh, about 50-50, to be honest with you. 45% said no, and the remaining 55% said yes. And uh, whatever you provide, we would be happy to happy to watch. So um, that's that's that one there. Let me, uh, I'm going to close this poll out then and hide it, and we'll we'll continue on here. We're just about done, so we'll wrap this up here. Uh, real quick. So next question, do you really play in a band? Um, yes, I do. We haven't played in a while, uh, but this is my band. Jason Allen is a jerk. Um, I play organ and rap and my friend Ben there in the hoodie, he beatboxes. Uh, we are every bit as terrible as you would imagine. But if you want to go on YouTube and look up this Junction City Live episode three, that was uh, a fun little interview we did on uh, at Weber State University. And we messed with the guy that was interviewing us to the point where he got so frustrated and flustered and it's hilarious to watch. So uh, part three is the interview and then our last song. So you should uh, definitely watch that. It's kind of funny. All right. Um, also, I, I was asked to uh, perform and fill in when a, when one of my favorite bands of all time, when their favorite lead singer was, uh, was sick uh, or when their yeah, so their lead singer was sick and they said, can you fill in, you know, all the words to all of our songs and you, you sound just like him. Um, can you fill in? I don't think anyone will notice the difference. And I said, absolutely. So this is, um, me. for those of you that can't tell, that's me on the right. Um, and then Freddie Mercury's on the left. So yeah, that was, uh, yeah, people, people still to this day can't really tell the difference. I think here's, here's another picture. I mean, it's, it's almost uncanny when I look at that picture, I, even I have a hard time telling which one's me and which one's uh, Freddie Mercury. So, um, I mean, that, that's impressive. I'll tell you something else. So, so sometimes for those of you that are still unsure, um, on the, on the left is Freddie Mercury. And then, uh, I've been, been called fatty Mercury on the, on the right hand side. Okay. So just wrapping up here. Um, last question, frequently asked question, the mountain States director job sounds so much fun. Uh, are you hiring? Oh, as a matter of fact, yes, we are. Uh, we talked about this earlier, but I wanted to to uh, point this out again. Yes, we are hiring. We are looking for a new director uh, since I've moved on over to Old Castle. It is a great job. It's one of the funnest jobs I've ever had. And uh, if you want more information about it, please let me know. I'd be happy to chat with you about this job and and what what it entails. But it is it is uh, a lot of fun. And you know, obviously, you get to work alongside me and Mike Blackham. So we're uh, we're a couple of really cool, really cool fellows. And uh, so if you're interested, feel free to uh, apply and and we could have a lot of fun together. So um, that's all I've got as questions. I'm going to give you just a couple minutes here. We've got probably four or five minutes until the hour. Um, so if you want to ask any questions, and Mike, if you have anything you want to type in to uh, to finalize any any last last uh, 
last minute things here, let me know. And then, um, but here's my contact information again. If you uh, have any questions that you want to talk specifics with me, feel free. Uh, I'll, I'll stick around here and ramble on for about another minute or so uh, to see if we get any questions. I tried to answer them as we went along through, but I'm going to pull those up and see if, uh, if we had any other questions here um, before, we, uh, before we part, see if there's any that I did not address. Um, it sounds like most of them were telling me they could hear us. We talked about the equivalent circular diameter of box culvert and uh, and also with elliptical pipes as well. So I think we we uh, addressed all those questions there. Um, let's see here. Looks like we got maybe another one. All right. Well, Mike sent a thing. Thanks, everyone. Uh, reach out to either of us, uh, Mike or, or me, for any questions you have. Um, Mike's Mike's email address. Just if you guys want to write this down, uh, if you have specific questions for like Geneva or uh, or Mike, um, his email address is m blackham. That's m b l a c k h a m at genevapipe.com. So feel free to to shoot him an email. Um, I've got my email up on the screen, but um, and if you if you need to get a hold of Mike, feel free to reach out to me. I mean, Mike and I are really good friends, uh, so we'll I'll pass any information along to him that you need as well. So thank you. Uh, I apologize for the technical difficulties again. It's weird. This has never happened to me before, where I couldn't hear uh, one of my organizers. So I apologize. I think we we did the best we could, Mike. So thank you for for uh, being patient and typing those in, uh, typing in all of your your chat things there. And and I want to thank everybody for your time. And uh, I'll be sending out the PDHs here in the next few days. So keep an eye out for those. Uh, be safe. Have a great weekend and uh, enjoy enjoy your time. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one.